Yeah, Speedstacks Timer HD is by far my favorite timer out there. I mean, it is HD, guys. It represents the official, professional, licensed Speedstacks Timer. I almost can't tell the difference anymore. These sounds like music to my ears. I can even install the app on my computer. It doesn't work, though, because you have to hold two at the same time and you cannot do that with... A trackpad. If only I had a timer that worked on my computer. CS Timer is known in the community for its plethora of features. Yes, I used the word plethora. Its customizability and how ugly it is. Jesus, look at that. I mean, there are better looking and more user-friendly timers out there, like one of my favorites, Cube Desk. But I don't think there's anything that comes close to the capabilities of CS Timer. And that's why I always find myself going back to using it. But its perk is also its con, because it can do so much and it becomes such a mess to learn everything. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how I set up mine to go from this ugh, to this and go over all the things you absolutely need to know when using the timer. And then I'm going to cover some more advanced features I always find myself using, as well as some tips and tricks that you guys helped me with on Instagram. So I... Right. Let's get started. <laughs> Yo! So this is what you see the first time you open CS Timer, but hold up a second. <laughs> Gotta wear some sunglasses because damn, this is ugly. Now, before I'm gonna talk about all the cool settings, etc., I'm first gonna give you guys a quick overview of all the basic functionality. So if you already know how CS Timer works, you can just skip to this time right here. So let's first talk about this top part right here. This is called the Scramble Panel. On the left side, you can select the Scramble type. Right now, it's set to WCA, which means all the official events are on the right side. So this is basically like the category and the subcategory. Now you can also select 3x3 three three and have some more subsets over here. So let's say if you just want to do last layer, you can just select last layer and last layer algorithms will show up. Now in the middle, we see the timer or the timer as we say. <laughs> and you can start a solve by simply, let me actually do a solve. So I have done the scramble on the screen and quick tip, if you press this tools button right here, it will actually draw the scramble. Now it can do way more stuff, but we're going to see that later in the video. But I've done my scramble. I hold spacebar. Once the time is green, we can actually start the solve. And when you're done with the solve, you can press any key on the keyboard. So it doesn't need to be space bar, just so you can just, uh, you can just do a crazy stop and it will most likely stop the timer. Now, once you have timed the solve, the solve will actually show up on the left side. Now this is the timer list panel. To show you what it does, let me quickly add a bunch of times. Now there's a lot more data in the timer list panel. First of all, on the top, we see a quick overview of the current performance, like underneath current. So you can see your current time, the current mean of three, average of five, average of 12. We can actually select what type of data needs to be there in the settings, which we're gonna do later. But it also shows on the right side, the best performances. So my best time was 8.69. Who decided on that time? It was me. <laughs> Now, if you want more information about a current time, you can just scroll to it and just press on the time itself. It will show this, which is kind of vague because like the scramble doesn't fully show, but you can actually press on one solve stat. Over here, you can just like redo the scramble and try it again. Alternatively, you can just like select the scramble over here and copy it if you want to send it to someone. But also, let's say if you did a plus two, you can select plus two, DNF or OK. I don't know why you would press OK. It's like, aren't all the times OK? If you want to delete it, you can press the X. We're not gonna delete 8.69, guys. Over here, it shows how many souls you've done. Now, if one of your souls was a DNF, it will actually say that 16 out of the 17 were completed. You also get a mean of all the times. So basically, the average of all the times you've done. But let's not make this a DNF. It's an OK. <laughs> or maybe that's when you use an OK, when you want to correct a plus two or a DNF, I suppose. Now, lastly, for the overview, we can see the sessions right here. Now, it says one. So if I press on it, there's like a list of all the different sessions. So if I go to two, it is empty right now. So basically, sessions are just a way to have multiple time lists. Now, the reason this is useful is because if we go to the second one and I select four by four, for example, right here, I actually get four by four scrambles in this session. I can just do all of my four by four solves right here. Once I wanna go back to three by three, I go to one. Now we can do even better because if we press on session right here, we see all of the data. Now this is overwhelming. I'm like, what is all this stuff? I don't know. What we can actually do is press right here and rename our first session. We did three by three, so let's just call it three by three. Second one, rename it into four by four. I accidentally typed 24 by four. <laughs> now this way, if we go back, we can actually see it's called three by three and four by four. So I advise you guys to just make a session for all of the events you practice. So this way, all of your stats will just be organized into groups, which is really, really nice. If you want some sessions to go up or down, you can just use these arrows. So let's say if four by four is your main event, you can just press the arrow up and it will be on top right now. 
Now I want to talk a little more about this panel right here. Uh, it's, it's called the tools panel, by the way. And if we just press right here, you can see all of this stuff. Some of them are useful. Some of them are kind of like okay for some people. I like to set it on time distribution because this way you get a quick distribution of all of the different solves. For example, I can see that I have like one eight second solve, five nine second solve, six ten second solves and so on. But I know a lot of people actually prefer time trend, which just shows like a trend of all of your times. The gray line are your singles, the red line, the average of five and the blue line, the average of 12. And then lastly, over here on the top left, we have some very useful buttons. In the middle, if you just press on the logo itself, it will just be some general information about CS Timer. You can go through it if you want to, but it's it's really boring, guys. Like, who is going to do that? One thing that is very useful, though, are the keyboard shortcuts. I use them all the time. I will quickly show you which one that I use most. Alt D, Z, up, down, left, right, and one, two, three. Now, if you're using Mac, the same shortcut supply, but instead of Alt, it becomes Option. So, for example, Option Z deletes the current time. Now, if I press option D, it will just clear the entire session. So be careful with this one. And sometimes you will accidentally clear your entire session and you will just start crying. So, and then finally, if you have a plus two or a DNF, you can actually use control plus two for a plus two and three for a DNF. And one is okay. We can press the button on the top right to hide the scramble. I don't know why you would do that. You cannot even see your scramble then. And you can press this button to hide the times. Now the bottom right button, we have tried that one before, is actually there to hide the tool. So right now, now i don't see anything i just see the timer itself like i don't know who would want that congrats you now know enough to fully use cs timer you can even use some shortcuts create some sessions and do all of the fun stuff but if you want to do even more keep watching the video let's first get rid of this Ugh. on the top left you have the settings button and over here you see an overview of all the different settings it is global display color i don't have to read them all let's first of all focus on the aesthetic so display and color and later i will go over the different settings so first of all normally it's like this digital timer now if that if that's your thing that's totally fine but i like the normal one ui design i like material design without shadows it's just a bit cleaner I'll leave all of this to normal. I'm not going to read all of them because you can just like experiment with most of them yourself. But now let's do these right here. This is really important. Font color, white. This looks even worse, but just, just, just wait a second, guys. The background, black. Board color, black. Button color, not quite black. Just like the, the one next to it. Logo color, this bluish you right here link color i do this light blue as well this is already looking so much better but just wait a second because under timer right here we can actually change some stuff i like to set my timer update in seconds so that when you're timing it actually just shows the second itself and right here under scramble i like to set the alignment to the left side that's just personal preference and if you've done all of that cs yes, timer looks like this and it actually looks decently good this is a session i did earlier it has 100 solves the mean is 9.00 which makes me really sad because I, I was getting some dope times at the end look at this seven 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 so i i'm pretty sure if i did one more time it would be eight point something but i had to keep it clean for the video so more information is starting to show up like the average of 50 25 now if this is too much information for you you can actually change that into the settings right here statistics statistical indicators you can select just these. It will just show the average of 100. Even cooler, you can actually set a custom one. So if you like these averages and you just like the average of 69, for example. Yes, I'm 25 years old. Then we have an average of 69 over here as well, which is sub 9. Woo! Now, something I wanted to show that is really important is the export button right here. Normally, your times get saved on your device itself. So if you just go away and just open it again, it will just all of the times will still be in there. But let's say if you want to use a different device and just have the same times, so you can actually do that. So if you press export, the easiest way to do this is either logging in using your WCA account or just your Google account. This way, you can just export it to your account. And if you open it on a different device, you can just import it straight from that account. That's the easiest. Alternatively, you can either export it into a file and just save the file and use it on a different device. But this is way cooler. Export to server. We can actually give it a name. I called it Milan because that's my name. Uploaded successfully. Okay. Um, if I go back to my other one right now, which was in a private tab, so it doesn't have any of the data, we can actually have press the export, import from server. We can type our name, which is Milan. 
This will override all local, local data. This is fine because we know what times we are importing. So just let's just press OK. And bam, all of the times are back on a different device. Now, the most useful settings will be here under timer. If you're practicing for a competition, for example, you might want to be using WCA inspection. Let's just set it on always. You can also select if you want to have a voice or not. This way, you don't really have to look at your screen. You can just hear them say like eight seconds or 12 seconds. So you don't, so you don't have to focus on what the times are on the screen. Here's a quick overview of that. If you tap the space bar, a timer will start. And after eight seconds, you will hear. Eight and seconds. when you need to start a solve, you will hear. 12 seconds. Just like in competition. This is a really important one. Entering in times with. There's like different ways you can time your solves. Now, if you're using Stackmat Timer, you can connect your Stackmat Timer. I will show something later in the video. But something I often do is just type them. So I will do times with the Stackmat Timer. So you can type 8.69. But something else you can do is actually not typing the dot. So if you just type 8.69, it will automatically add a dot after the first two decimals. So this will be 8.69. This is a huge time saver. Now, this is a really important one as well. Time of keeping space down. A Stackmat Timer, you need to hold it for some time before you can actually release it and it starts timing. I think... The stack my timer is 0.55. I think originally it's set to 0.3 seconds, but I just keep it at zero seconds because otherwise I might start solving too soon and then I, then I suddenly notice that my timer hasn't started and it's super annoying. And finally, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks, some of which you guys helped me with on Instagram. So please follow me. I post a lot of my stories. You can hide the average labels underneath the time by checking this one under global show average label. So if I uncheck this, it doesn't show on the main screen. You can also change what these labels say if you go to statistics. Right here, you can see it's currently set at average of five and average of 12. So let's say if you want the second one to be average of 100, you can do that right here. Voila. Under display, you can actually upload the background image. You need a URL for these pictures, but once you have, you can just press OK and it will show the picture. You can set the opacity right here. To connect your Stackmat timer to CS timer, you need two things. A 2.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter audio jack cable and a mic input on your computer. So plug in a cable to the Stackmat and your computer and turn on the timer. Then in your computer settings, make sure the input is set to the cable you just plugged in. The audio you're normally getting from the Stackmat is super random, but I turn it down a bit so that it's almost at 100% volume. Then I'm using Chrome because it seems to be working better over there. Then select the Stackmat as input and bam, you can use the Stackmat timer as the input it automatically goes to the next scramble so you won't need to do anything something else you can do on chrome is installing the app to your computer just press this button right here and chrome will install it as an app for you it works exactly the same by the way if you were wondering cs timer works on your phone as well and if you add a bookmark to your home page which you can do on ios or android as i show right here it's just like you have the app and you need no internet connection you can still use all the functions on your phone, importing, exporting, all that stuff. Although you will find out that the UI on a smaller screen isn't great. And finally, there's a Google Chrome extension called CS Timer Plus, which if you enable it, oops, I clicked on the wrong tab. Or oh, what is this? The cube head page on the Yo. cubicle. All products, five stars. Let me now go back to CS Timer. Oops, another wrong tab. What? Discount code cube head for huge discount? Anyway, if you activate the extension, you get a new modern UI and you can choose more voices for WCA inspection like Ding Man. What? Eight seconds. Thanks for watching this video and all the support. I will see you in the next one. Ciao. 12 seconds. Guys, listen to this. For your 8.88 second, very lucky self, Uncle Tingman, very proud.